Wow, that was a close one. If it wasn't for that defibrillator, my favourite character would not have survived. Sorry, how rude of me. I should probably introduce myself. I am Bartholomew the Bookworm. And I have Frank Pantridge to thank big time for saving my favourite superhero. Why should I thank Frank Pantridge, you ask? Well, he is the Ulster Scots physician and cardiologist who invented the defibrillator. I can see your puzzled faces and I am guessing it is because of the word defibrillator. Well, the machine that was just used is called a defibrillator. This is a very important machine used in emergency medicine. So, how did Frank Pantridge end up inventing such a machine? Frank's story begins in Hillsborough, County Down, in 1916. His ancestry was of mixed English and Ulster Scots heritage. His mum came from the McCandless and McKibben families, both of Scottish origin. Although we know Frank became a very successful doctor, anyone who knew Frank when he was younger would not have thought much would come of the boy. You see, young Frank was quite the troublemaker. Frank's attendance at school was quite poor and he was even expelled from school several times. Frank must have gotten a talking to, or perhaps he just grew wiser with age. Frank decided to put more effort into his studies. He completed his secondary education at Friends School, Lisburn, and went on to study medicine at Queen's University, Belfast qualifying in 1939 as a doctor. Frank accepted a place as house physician in the Royal Victoria Hospital. A month later, World War II broke out and Frank decided to sign up for the Royal Army Medical Corps. He was posted to the Far East as a medical officer to an infantry battalion. He was awarded the Military Cross during the fall of Singapore, where he became a prisoner of war. He served much of his captivity as a slave labourer on the Burma Railway. Luckily, Frank survived and was released when the war ended. When Frank regained his health, he began working as a physician once again. This time in charge of the cardiac department. This is a department in charge of the health of your heart. At that time, coronary heart disease was a huge problem. Frank knew that heart attacks could be corrected with a brief electric shock to the chest. The problem was the equipment to perform the shock was located in hospitals and it was often too late for the patients as they had to travel and were often too sick. Frank realised that giving this shock to patients as quickly as possible was vital in order to ensure the patient's survival. Dr Pantridge suggested that to increase a patient's chance of survival Heart attacks should be treated as close to the time that they occur. This meant that instead of bringing a patient to the hospital to be treated, the electricity would have to be brought to the patient wherever they are. This meant creating a portable defibrillator. Frank quickly got to work at the Royal Victoria Hospital and finally in 1965, with the help of John Geddes, a senior house officer, the world's first portable defibrillator was created. It took a while, but it was well worth the wait. Meet John Geddes. 
Frank and John decided to use 12 volt car batteries for the current to allow electrical shock to be administered to patients who had suffered heart attacks. He installed it in an ambulance and the device was first used in January 1966. It roughly weighed 70 kilograms. The modern device we use today weighs just three kilograms. Frank's idea was simple but ingenious. If a patient was having a heart attack, a doctor would be sent out in the ambulance to stabilize the patient with a defibrillator at their home. Frank knew the majority of cardiac related deaths happened outside of the hospital because patients had no access to such a device. This portable defibrillator solved this problem, meaning much more lives could be saved. Frank Pantridge was given the title of Father of Emergency Medicine for his outstanding work. What a title, huh? Pantridge continued to work on the defibrillator to make it available throughout the world and safe to use. Thousands of lives were saved because of his invention. However, many more could have been saved if the defibrillator was accessible to everyone in the country. So, how do defibrillators actually work? Well, let's get straight to the heart of the explanation. Get it? Heart? <laughs> let's check out the science. Defibrillation helps the heart when it is not pushing blood because the heart muscle is not working properly. It may not be beating in a regular pattern, or not at all. Electricity in our body causes our muscles to contract. This helps us move. The heart is a large muscle and so needs to contract and relax in order to push blood throughout the heart and out to the rest of the body correctly. Sometimes the heart muscle doesn't contract in the correct way or at the correct speed. This is called an arrhythmia, which means out of rhythm. Fibrillation is a type of arrhythmia when the whole heart is quivering, which means it's not organized to make heartbeats of any kind. CPR can get blood to the body when the heart is fibrillating, but the heart still needs to be restarted. Sometimes CPR will do that as well, but often a defibrillator is needed. Defibrillation works by carefully sending a strong electric current to the heart, which resets it and hopefully returns a normal coordinated heart rhythm. It needs to depolarize, which means take away the existing electrical charge from a large part of the heart muscle, which stops the arrhythmia and allows the normal heartbeat to return. This machine may not look like much, but without it, many more lives would be lost due to cardiac arrest. Thanks to Frank, thousands of lives are saved every year. Easy to access defibrillators are located all around the world, ready to use in the case of emergency. Wow, that was fun. I can't wait to see you on my next adventure.